we were saying how important it always is at Motown when they got a group and hooked it up with writers and producers and really found a chemistry that worked. That's what took some of these Mo, you know, Motown artists to the next level. If you think of Supremes with Holland Dozer and Holland or the Four Tops. But for you guys, once you get in the group, this really begins the beginning of this relationship with Norman Whitfield and Barrett Strong and Norman producing the albums right. for you guys. We were sitting there and all of a sudden, on the radio, a record came on by the name of Dance to the Music. Yeah. What was so significant about this record was, this record, thought by Sly and the Family Stone, yep. but it had multi-leads. Mm -hmm. This is something that was just unheard of. You know, when you got a group, you got a lead singer and a background. Right, that was well, the formula. Well, Sly was singing, his sister was singing, his brother was singing, Larry was singing, Larry Graham. And when he came up with the track of Cloud Nine, he thought about it. He said, you know what? And I, 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 said, I told him, I said, Norman, why don't we just use everybody? Mm. I said, man, we got all this talent up here. You know, everybody sings their own songs. We got great voices. And that's how Cloud Nine came about. Mm. You know, we did a line a piece, a line here, Eddie did a line, Melvin did a line, Otis did a line. And then we were concerned about the record being long. We were concerned about, right. like I said, we had a problem with Cloud Nine. They didn't know yep. whether or not they would play it because people was going to say it was about marijuana. But when they first put it out, I never will forget, I was, I was in uh, Puerto Rico. Hmm. And uh, by that time, the first first few few six seven months I was in the group, every night I'm rehearsing. Okay, right. Because it's something new. They, I mean, we want to put this in the show. I'm like, oh my God, I got to do that. <laughs> and so I'm learning steps. Right. And I never would forget. I, they they had called me downstairs, and me and Paul was working, and uh, they say, Cloud Nine won a Grammy. I said, Okay, Paul, show me the step. <laughs> I I didn't I didn't I didn't, I didn't realize yeah. the significance of it. I don't even think I would stopped and thought about it until a few years later. Yeah. And then I didn't know until maybe 20 years later that it was actually the first record that won a Grammy for Motown That's Records. Right. Can you imagine that? All of the hit records that Motown yeah. had. It was the very first Grammy Award f for the history of Motown Records. Yeah. Now that, I mean, it was unbelievable. And, if, you know, I, I um, I seen Norman right before he passed, you know. Mm. Me and Norman Whitfield, we had one of the greatest marriages with singer mm -hmm. and producer in the history of the music business. Mm. Uh, believe it or not, we argued all the time. Mm -hmm. He would come up with a song and he would, Norman was the type of guy, he'll come up, he'll play the music, he'll say, now, Dennis, um, David Rufford could really sing this. <laughs> but uh, I don't think you can sing it. All right. You know what he was doing, though, I found out later, was pushing so challenging you. He right. was challenging me. And it would make me mad. I would say, well, can I at least try to sing it? <laughs> right. He said, no, no, you're not going to be able to sing it as good as David. And, and just, like, just like Papa was rolling song, yeah. our, our next Grammy winner, you know, the story about my, uh, the, the big story that came out in the movie was that I got mad about 3rd of September. Well, the true story is my father died on the 3rd of October. Okay. And, um, of course, my mother being a religious woman, first thing she said, Daddy wasn't on Rolling Stone. <laughs> right. <laughs> but what happened when I got in the studio with Norman and I heard the track, yeah. first thing I asked him, I said, do you know anything about my family? <laughs> right. he, he said, no. He said, just, it's just really a coincidence. The, the publicity people took it and ran with it. They said, oh, man, we could go to work with this. This is a true story about it. Uh, what it did was, by this that little moment before I recorded it, mm -hmm. it, it brought me down just enough to think about my father. Yeah. To the first line is exactly what I came out and I said, It was the 3rd of September, that day I'll always remember. That was the day that my daddy died. When I said that, that's exactly the feeling he wanted. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history.